Hi, Marsha. Hi, Kelly. Ha ha ha, that's not Marsha. Who are you? <laughs> this is Robert, Kelly's husband. Yeah, Robert's joining me today. Uh, Marsha, between her birthday and she's having a uh, Christmas party and she's doing Christmas Eve and she's got house guests. So um, this episode wasn't going to make it out this weekend. So I decided that we do just a short little episode about liquid traditions. Some of you already know about the uncle's eggnog, but I thought I'd bring Robert on and we'll talk a little bit about about some of the drink traditions that we have in our family. So Robert, you want to tell us a little bit about the eggnog? Sure. So the eggnog recipe came to me by way of my dad when his two brothers passed away. And my dad gave me an envelope of old pictures of my father's side. And in that envelope of the pictures was a recipe of eggnog. So did your dad know about the recipe? Did he know anything? I don't think so. Okay. I think it was pretty much both my uncle's okay. recipe. Did he even know it was in the envelope? Probably. He probably looked he at, probably, the, okay. at the envelope. So let me just describe this recipe. So it's on a piece of paper that on the back says, Barney's Let's Play School Sweepstakes. Official rules, no purchase necessary. Um, it looks like it's a little sweepstakes rule thing that would have come in a, a package of a toy or maybe in a cereal box. Um, and there's a date on the bottom. Requests must be received by September 30th, 1999. So this was probably written down in 1999, possibly yeah. 1998, yeah. but probably about yeah. 1999. I would think so. Yeah. So So both my uncles were living together at the time. Okay. In, yeah. In, in Fort, Texarkana, right? Fort Worth, Texas. In Fort Worth. Okay. So this eggnog, let me just read the recipe to you in case you're interested. It's really good. So it calls for half a gallon of brandy, half a gallon of white rum, half a gallon of brown rum, half a gallon of whiskey, five pounds of sugar, six dozen eggs, two pounds of confectioner's sugar, 24 cans of carnation milk, four cans of Eagle Brand milk, that's the sweetened condensed milk, 1.07 ounce cinnamon, I think that's the container of cinnamon, like the whole container of cinnamon that you buy at the store, 1.07 ounce of nutmeg, and five tablespoons of vanilla. No other instructions, just the ingredients. And of course, you can imagine if you combined all of that together, you're talking about two gallons worth of alcohol and then all of the other ingredients. That makes it makes probably what? About my, my guess is I don't know. About five, five gallons. Five gallons, six gallons. Yeah, something like that. Needless to say, my uncles were heavy drinkers. <laughs> so I cut this recipe down to a household size. Because I think this is a recipe for like uh you know, a commercial kitchen, like maybe the American Legion or Elks Club or something like that. But anyway. Or two uncles. <laughs> so I cut it down. And so in the cut down version, it's three ounces each of brandy, white rum, brown rum, and whiskey, 12 tablespoons of sugar, six eggs, and you put the egg yolks in with all of that. You save the egg whites separately three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, uh, two cans of evaporated milk, and one five ounce can of condensed milk, and one and a quarter teaspoons of vanilla. And then you take all of that and you blend it. I use a mixer. Um, just blend it all together in, with a mixer, the egg yolks and all of that. The egg whites you keep separately. And then once you've mixed that, then you take the egg whites, which is six, right, six eggs, so six egg whites that you've saved off, and nine tablespoons of powdered sugar. So I mix the egg whites, 
whip the egg whites with the mixer. And then as I'm whipping the egg whites, I slowly put in the powdered sugar. So that's nine tablespoons of powdered sugar that goes in as you're mixing the egg whites. And so you mix the egg whites. Egg whites. I usually mix them till they have pretty, not super, super stiff peaks, but, but stiff peaks. Um, and then, so it's pretty solid. And then I fold that into the other mixture. Fold the egg whites into the other liquid mixture. And then you refrigerate or drink. And it's excellent. It's very good. Yes, we've had it at a few parties. Mm -hmm. Seems mm -hmm. pretty popular. Yeah. This recipe makes about, oh, I'd say... A um, couple of quarts. Uh, if you mix the egg whites in, if you don't mix the egg whites in, it makes two quarts of the egg yolk mixture. And then if you mix the egg whites in, it's more like three quarts. But then if you're not taking it right away, like to, I put it in mason, quart mason jars. And then if you're not taking it right away to, uh, you know, give away to somebody, it sort of deflates. Mm -hmm. So it would make about three quarts with the egg whites. But if you had it sitting in the refrigerator for a while, you would have to take that third quart and use it to kind of backfill the other two quarts to make them look yeah, full. Supplement them. Supplement them, yeah. And I put it, like, for the party that we just had, I made it in quart jars because I was only making two quarts. And we were going to put it in a punch bowl. But to give it away, a lot of times we'll put it into pint jars because it's quite potent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, anyway, really, really good. And it, it's a fun recipe to make, and it's a fun recipe to give to give as gifts. And it's nice to tell my uncle's story every once in a while. Right, right. So, yeah. And it's always fun to compare the recipe handwritten on this sweepstakes rules uh, page to the broken down recipe, you know, the smaller recipe that makes about two, two and a half quarts, let's say. All right. So we have a couple of other holiday recipes that are part of our traditions. Um, the next one, hi, Nash. Nash just came to join us. Um, the next one is called syllabub. And this recipe came from a story that Robert heard on NPR back in 2009. Um, and they were making syllabub at Colonial Williamsburg. Yes, and I thought it was interesting we could make it for, I think it was New Year's Eve. I think, yeah, I think when we first made it, it was yeah. right after Christmas yeah. that the story, or maybe it was around Christmas time that the story came, but I think it was after Christmas by the time we made yeah. the syllabub. Yeah, there were a couple, of, a few glasses sitting on the counter for a few days. Mm-hmm. So we, um, the way you make syllabub and I'll put a link to the uh, article and the recipe in the show notes. But basically, the way you make syllabub is with uh, German white wine, Rhine wine, mm -hmm. is what they called it in the recipe in, and in colonial times. And then you mix that with lemon juice and cream. And Heavy lemon cream. rinds. And, oh, and you, yeah, you, you grate cream. lemon rind like lemon zest. And so... What happens is the lemon... And you have to hand whisk it. Right. and With the birch whisk. <laughs> yeah. In the, in the story, they were using birch sticks uh, tied together. I use a regular whisk. I have not ever used a birch, birch whisk to do this, but Robert suggested that I should. So you, you uh, whisk it, the, the cream and the wine and the lemon juice all together... And I think there's some sugar in it, too. Yes, there's some yeah, sugar in it. Yeah. Actually, there's a lot of sugar in it. And you whisk it all up, and then you pour it into the glasses. And over time, you just sit it out on the counter. The cream is has been curdled, um, which sounds awful, but it's not. It's, it's really good. And the cream rises up, and you have the wine on the bottom, the liquid on the bottom, and then you have cream on the top of the glass. And it's real hard. It's kind of a, I don't know, what would you say the consistency of it is? Uh, like soft butter. Okay, yeah, or like gelatin kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not really gelatin-y, right. but, it's, but it's got a, um, it's f more firm than whipped cream. Yeah. Um, and so you've got this hard topping on it and then the liquid underneath, and you eat the topping, which is really good. And, then and you, the longer it stays out on the counter for like a week, the better tasting. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's good. It, it seems odd that you would sit something out with whipped cream on your counter and not put it in the refrigerator, but you don't have to. It's been preserved. Mm-hmm. It's almost like it's like when you make ceviche or something and the, the acid kind of cooks the meat. It does something to the protein. Mm-hmm. And then, and then it can just sit out on the counter, which in the times of Colonial Williamsburg made sense because there wasn't really refrigeration, and this was a way to preserve, uh, to preserve a, a a nice treat. Yeah, they had it as a dessert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's a great. I think it'd be a good dessert for New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, really good. And also really rich. So the uncle's eggnog is really rich, and the syllabub is also really rich because of the cream. So now we have a third tradition. And, and this, this can hap- This third tradition happens anytime. Yes, <laughs> especially when Marsha's visiting, yeah. uh, because these are Marsha's mom, Pody's Manhattans. And she taught Robert how to make Manhattans one time when she came down to visit. And so... Uh, Two parts bourbon to one part sweet vermouth and add a, a cherry and a little bit of bitters. Oh, I forgot about the bitters, yeah. yeah. Do you put in any of the cherry juice or you just put the cherry? Uh, when I pour it into the... So I make... Like when Marsha comes, I'll make like six, a batch of six and then I in a jar and I put it in the freezer so it's nice and cold for when she gets here. Okay. Then and I you don't pour, and you don't put it over ice in a cocktail shaker. No, I, I just you make it make ahead it and then put it in yeah. the freezer. That is important because if you if you put it in a cocktail shaker with ice, it waters it down. It waters it down, so you want it to be strong, and so you don't. They are strong. <laughs> yeah. Pody always kept the um, kept the bourbon in the in the. Uh, the mix in the freezer so that yeah. you didn't have to put it over ice. In that was Nalgene another thing container. that he taught that she uh, she taught Robert. So we have those every time Marsha comes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're really good. Mm-hmm. And then you get fancy cherries. I do. They're cherries from the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, and they're called Bada Bing or something. I think Til- Tilgen Tilgen Farms. I think Tilgen Farms. Okay. All right. Not just the regular. No, these maraschino are cherries that you buy in the Pacific grocery. Northwest. These are fancy maraschino. They're still maraschino cherries, but they're they're fancier. All right, so that's Manhattan's, and then the fourth one, the fourth drink. This is a drink that uh, is not alcoholic. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> this is from my childhood, and when I was a kid, whenever we decorated the Christmas tree, every year when we decorated the Christmas tree, we would always have this, and my mom had a punch bowl. And the, you know, the old-fashioned punch bowl with the little punch bowl glasses. And she'd bring out the punch bowl. Although I think some years she'd just make it in a regular bowl. But I, I do remember the punch bowl. Um, and it's uh, lime sherbet and 7-Up. Super easy. You just put the lime sherbet into the um, punch bowl. And, and I remember her opening up the box. You know how ice cream... It doesn't come in a box anymore. It used to ice cream used to come carton. in a rectangular carton. Yeah. Not the circular ones. And she just opened it up and so it would be this big rectangle shape of sherbet and she just cut it in a couple of slices and put it into the the bowl and then pour uh seven up over the top. And so we had this seven up and lime sherbet every year when we would decorate the Christmas tree. And in the early years before Aunt Betty got married, so that would have been pre so what Pre-72. Yeah, so up until the time I was about 10, um, Aunt Betty would always be there with us, decorating the tree, too. And we drink 7-Up, lime sherbet and 7-Up punch. Mm -hmm. And then um, I kept that tradition up for a while. Robert and I would have lime sherbet and 7-Up while we decorated the Christmas tree. Um, But it got harder and harder to find lime lime sherbet. Yeah, I searched one, one year, and I finally came up with the sherbet that had orange, right, and raspberry. It's and like raspberry, the, the, the three rainbow sherbet. Yeah, it's ra- called rainbow. Yeah, it's I not the same. Lime. And you know what? Honestly, it probably tastes about the same with rainbow sherbet, but it just didn't mm-hmm. feel the same. And so, without the lime sherbet, I uh, we haven't we haven't had it in a while. And maybe you could find lime sherbet in a specialty ice cream place. 
Or maybe mm-hmm. you could use lime gelato. Or I, I really don't know. Um, of course, we found other things to drink. Yeah. Syllabub, <laughs> Manhattans, eggnog. Yeah, so we have some other choices now. But if you're looking for a fun, uh, a fun drink uh, that for the kids, for the kids, or older kids who don't drink alcohol, or if you have to drive, uh, you can have the the sherbet and Seven Up punch. So that's our uh, liquid traditions. Yes. For for this episode. Thank you, Robert, for joining me. Uh, you're welcome. Thank and you, Marsha. <laughs> so uh, the other thing I just wanted to do before we go is I just wanted to recognize uh, we've had some reviews. And I just wanted to thank uh, Poetry Lover and Knits Enough and FGDF Hemily and Melanie Roberts and Mom Diggity Knits for all of your reviews. Um, really nice. Uh, the, one of them says, I really look de- forward to the newest download. It's like sitting around the table with friends, knitting and enjoying a glass of wine. Uh, Kelly and Marsha give me ideas for new patterns or knitting designs to try, but also venture into weaving beeswax wraps and other fun projects. Speaking of beeswax wraps, I am going to be making some for Christmas presents. Spoiler uh, alert. Yeah. Well, I don't think any of oh. the people who are getting these listen to the podcast. But yeah, I guess it could be a, a spoiler if they do. Um, we have also, a, a Knits Enough said she absolutely loves the podcast. She thinks the, the spinning, dyeing, weaving, knitting, crocheting content is great. But she says, I love their chit chat, hearing about bees, what they're cooking, how Enzo is doing their travels, etc. So that's nice to know that people like listening to all the the chit chat. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's not uh, not the knitting content. And then F G D F H M L E says, I really enjoy listening to Kelly and Marsha. It's refreshing because you can tell they have been friends for a long time. L- makes you feel like you're having a chit chat with friends. And yeah, we have been friends for a long time, over thirty years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, since college. Yeah, um, a lot of chit chat in thirty years. We haven't run out though. No. We, we, we talk about that sometimes, like in all these years, we haven't run out of things to talk about. And when we'd be on the 20-mile walks or 21-mile walks, the Big Sur walks, we'd get started and each of us would think, okay, well, we won't talk for the whole time because we'll run out of things to say in six hours. But we don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that theme continues in Melanie's uh, review. She says it's one of her favorites. She says, I'm always inspired to look up the patterns. Um, they have such a fun friendship, and they've convinced me that I need to learn to spin. And then uh, Scotland Chronicles, or uh, Mom Diggity Knits, she enjoyed the Scotland Chronicles. She said, I love the episodes featuring Marsha and Kim's trip to Scotland. I took notes. Thank you for sharing. So uh, I just wanted to thank all of you for those very nice reviews on Apple Podcasts. And I'm not as good at looking for reviews on the other apps. So if you have left a review on one of the other apps, um, I probably haven't seen it. I um, I tried going in to look for them, and I haven't I haven't been successful. So, all right. Well, I think that is all. Uh, this is a short episode, just to kind of just to kind of put something out there for you. You know, you've been waiting. Um, we've been a little less consistent this fall than I'd like to be. Uh, we are planning to record next week and have an episode out next weekend as well. So, um, more but, chit-chat. Yeah, more chit-chat. All the holiday chit-chat. Mm-hmm. And the New Year chit-chat. So we'll be talking about our plans for the new year and uh, what the pressure of the new decade has uh, made us decide to do. So we'll see you in about a week. Goodbye, Marsha. (laughs) Bye, everyone.